What is up everyone and today we are discussing the elusive anti-aliasing settings in Lychee Slicer. I've been asked about this a bunch. I did an episode about it ages ago. They've changed the way the terminology works a little bit and I wanted to kind of go over it again. You know, it has absolutely nothing to do with the model parts you're seeing me support. This is just for background while I talk to you about this subject. So in Lychee Slicer, there are several types of anti-aliasing available. This uh, is found on the export tab when you are ready to export your slices. So not the prepare tab that I'm currently messing around with right now, but we'll get over to that tab in a minute and you'll see it. If you're not familiar with the export tab, I mean you should be if you use Lychee Slicer. On that tab you have a couple of options as far as your anti-aliasing goes. Now to explain anti-aliasing to some who don't know who, what it is exactly, anti-aliasing is essentially designed to smooth the surface of your 3D print, um, essentially by adding uh, pixels. Uh, I believe they refer to them as grayscale pixels uh, on the curvature edges of the image where the pixels are created on the slices. So that way it will display um, with that sort of, sort of like gray, as they call it, a, a, a gray offset. Um, now what that does essentially is it gives it a a smoother curve when it's creating a curve because as you guys know the, the way the 3d print is created is it creates it on uh, using pixels so pixels on every slice trying to make a curve if you've ever seen that with pixels or pixel graphics trying to make a curve you're often going to see no matter how good you are or how smooth you are when you zoom in you're going to see those pixels so what this is doing is in between the peaks and valleys on those pixels where the curve is it's creating this grayscale offset. And the offset is enough to cover up um, the curve so that way you don't see as much of it. You'll see less layer lines. You're going to see um, much smoother looking prints. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, now, again, as I said, there's a few different types of anti-aliasing. Off is the default. Um, when you start there is off is perfectly fine if you're using a printer that's printing under um, 35 microns or at 35 microns or less especially if you're working with extremely small models as these do not need anti-aliasing at all smooth surface is recommended for maximum anti-aliasing effect uh, this will apply kind of an effect on the edge anyway Regardless of the gray offset, and the gray offset there starts, I believe, at 20% with its default value on a 2 pixel radius. Now, the gray offset by default on the smooth surface option will increase when you turn that pixel size up on the radius. So if it starts at 2 pixels, if you bump it up to 4, its, it's, it, its own gray area offset kind of offscaling is going to increase. And so you're going to see a difference there. And so if you increase the gray offset further it is going to increase that even more and smooth out the edges as much as possible. Yes, this does mean you might lose some detail, um, but that's where sharpened details come in. Um, the sharpened details option does offer very sharp details, but at least some aliasing um, potentially still visible, like where you're gonna still see some of the, the, the pixel edges. Now, depending on the resin you use and depending on how the grayscale, because you can still do gray offset on a sharpened detail aliasing style, you may get a better result or, or lesser result depending on how that works out for you. Now, we're going to do some, some experimenting over the next couple of days, and I'm going to have a couple examples hopefully to show you all in the next video when we do a follow-up on this. So this is only really a part one. I do promise that we are going to follow up on this. You also have contrast blur, which is the... Uh, next method of anti-aliasing and this one is similar to the smooth surface um, however there is a strong contrast at the border very strong I, I, I will say this will blur and it's kind of a mix between the two so really you know when you have you know as far as your choices go um, if you're in the middle you can try that one I actually um, usually go with sharpen or smooth. I don't mess with contrast blur too much. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna experiment with all these different formats. Um, you also have your settings, obviously, with your parameters, which you know, depending on your printer, two, four, eight, I believe they go up to sixteen or twenty-four. 
um, some cases, and then you have your gray offset, and you have your pixel radius, um, and all of those things will make a major difference when it comes to how the aliasing actually does. Um, the level um, will, like I said, you have the two, four, eight, that sort of thing. That's your level. The higher your level, the more the gray area stretches. Um, the higher the radius, the bigger the, the pixel radius for um, the actual gray. You know, so for example, if you're working with a 50 micron printer, you'd probably want to go with two pixels. If you're working with a 35 micron print, you'd want to go with three pixels and so on and so forth. If you're doing 20 microns, you're going to want to go, um, you know, again, probably with uh, four. Um, and you, you can go higher. Uh, it's not saying that, you know, two pixels for 50, three for 35 is like the Bible. But these are some of the recommended settings that uh, Mango actually discusses in some of their support documentations because I did a, a lot of reading on this and I did a lot of reading on Reddit and a bunch of other sources to try to figure out the best way to explain this to y'all so that way this makes a lot of sense. Um, we also have something called high definition anti-aliasing now that's been added to the software. Uh, and essentially what this does is tries to make the highest possible definition or the crispest image possible. Um, good if you have a good graphics card. Now coming up here, I'm going to put an image up on the screen that shows the difference between the gray offsets so you can kind of see that. You see on the left there, you have the gray offset at zero, and the one on the right, you have the gray offset at 50%. Now this image is actually courtesy of Dos Grajos, and it is by Bold Miniatures. Um, this is not our photo. We actually took this from the Mango support documentation, um, so we hope they don't mind. Also, I'm going to show you up an image here. This is going to be a GIF uh, that's animated to show the difference in the pixel edge when the offset is adjusted. And this is just to give you guys kind of an example as to how that does get adjusted per slice when you're looking at this on your actual slices. And it's kind of hard to see this when you're doing the actual slice cut and you're looking at the, um, you know, the export. It's not always easy to see. I actually have a slice that's going on in the background here behind this GIF, and you'll see it's very difficult to see those curved edges um, when you're actually doing the slice cut. You can try to zoom in, you know, as best as you can. Like if you take a screenshot, you can try to zoom in. Uh, if you take video and capture it, you can try to zoom in and you can see it better. But it's very hard to see it um, with your naked eye when you're just kind of looking at the slice cuts as they go along. So. Again, we're going to do some experimentation. I'm going to take the same part and I'm going to do it pretty much at each level. And then I'm going to do it at different gray sets. We're going to go from 0% all the way up to 50%. Then we're going to adjust that and we're going to try that with, with the smooth bolt and then sharpen. And then I'm going to actually try it with contrast because it's something we don't work with as much. And I'm curious to see what the different levels are going to be like. One of the things I will also say as well, kind of as a, a, a finishing off on this subject, is that the aliasing will kind of depend on your printer and your resin too. I was actually told that a lot of this will really depend on your resin and some of the cheaper or more basic and standard resins don't really work well with aliasing and some of the cheaper printers that don't really have um, the power or capacity like your old school 2K printers may not be able to benefit from the aliasing features too much. But the newer printers, the more, um, uh, you know, uh, readily available and, uh, you know, good 8K resins and DLP resins and DLP printers and 8K and 4K printers will more than likely really benefit from the aliasing functionality that you're going to see, um, you know, that we're going to test through and see what that does. So I think it really depends on what you're working with, what kind of uh, you know files you're printing, what kind of model you're printing. But for the most part, it sounds like the gray offset is going to help you eliminate things like layer lines, but you are gonna blur just a tiny amount of detail. Now on a final note, I will also say that don't ever alias your supports. This actually has a chance of thinning out the tip of your support, which can potentially make the contact points smaller and can actually cause your support to fail. So don't ever do that. That's not a good route to go. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. It was a short one. Um, if y'all want to see more stuff like this, please leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe and ring that bell for notifications on episodes like this one. See you all again soon.